Right, big man, thanks very much for doing this. <laughs> See, you've got a bit of shockwaves in the band that and that. Ready to go. <laughs> um, starting out, mate, back at uh, Motherwell, growing up, we've asked everyone that's came on, what was football like for you growing up as a kid, playing all the time? Yes, playing all the time with my two big brothers, playing out in the streets, uh, just jumpers down. Uh-huh. Didn't I see that away. No, you don't, and uh, kids need to pay to play football now, don't they? So it's it's not really, it's, if anything, it's going backwards. I think the council's got to take a wee bit of responsibility, aren't they? Mm-hmm. But anywhere, whether it be grass, ash, wherever, we were always playing football. Me and my pals, and it'd be 19 aside, or mm-hmm. a World Cup or something like that. So it was all always football orientated. At what age could you start to tell that you were better than the other boys? <sighs> Uh, still probably still couldn't they tell you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think well, primary five, my dad took the primary school team and I was playing primary seven, so I was the only one coming out of my class at primary five to go and play with the, the, the primary seven school team, so that's when everybody started really talking about um, me being good at football, but I didn't actually realise I was just going to wait to play and enjoy it. And, um, and then I think... Getting, when you're people talking about getting scouted and stuff, when you're your boys club, uh, Wisher Boys Club I played with, and Jervison Boys Club, uh, people saying that their scouts coming to watch you and stuff, and you're like, oh, they're not coming to watch me, they'll not be watching me. And you just go out and you're, you're playing your stuff and you end up uh, getting picked up with that. So I think that's when the, the penny drops, you think, well, maybe I'm half decent anyway. Yeah. And then so obviously Motherwell did pick you up? Yes, done my work experience. Uh, at Motherwell under Tam Forsyth, Tommy McLean. That was a right eye opener mm-hmm. um, under they two. Tough on you? Uh, aye, very. Um, I think the, the days have changed now where uh, you can't even raise your voice to, to the kids, where we were, we were getting battered, actually battered for, mm-hmm. for no doing your jobs, right? For no cleaning the, the, the baths or, or taking the chewing gum out the urinals and stuff like that and cleaning the, the first team boys boots it's uh, it was a it was a doing you got you know um, see how you were a manager did you did you hate that the, the kids didn't do jobs and stuff like that I, did you try, did. can you get that back in there i was trying my hardest to get them cleaning the stands to to painting walls and everything but um the the club to be fair the club would get painters in and, and i was trying to get them back to old school mm-hmm. uh, mentality mm-hmm. uh, thinking but it, it takes time, it takes time and um, I, I didn't really get that. Do you think that helped in your career, that upbringing you that, had? That grounding, because I had it from my dad as well. My dad was very, very strict with me um, in every aspect of life that, I, that I'd done. There was very few positives. It was all really negatives and it made me a wee bit more determined mm-hmm. uh, to, to go and uh, do, well. Ma- do well in life, aye, mm-hmm. definitely. Do you think they've got it too easy now, huh? I think they've got it far too easy at the bigger clubs, uh, where they're, they're getting too much money, they're living in a false world, um, they're, they're coming in with their, their soap bags, looking like the players, they're on their social media, everything like that, and uh, it is, it's not a real world, and if, if they don't make it, then it's setting them back even further than, than the normal person, so I think there's got to be a happy medium. Um, and at Motherwell, well, how was that conversation when you told you were getting put out to Cumbernauld United or Moon? <laughs> That was Big Eck, um, was the manager then, he says, I think it was three years, get put out to Cumbernauld United to toughen us up, uh, and he, it certainly did. That was, I was trying to get a couple of the young boys out to uh, the teams in Ayrshire, mm-hmm. uh, because that's what I went through, but the, the time that I, I broke my ankle, a ridiculous tackle on me, and I broke my ankle, and my mum, straight on the phone to Big Eck, what you doing sending my boy? <laughs> Juniors, I was like, oh, here we go. <laughs> and he's actually saying sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> now, anytime I see him, he still, still has a laugh about it. Brilliant. <laughs> uh, one of your boot boys at Motherwell was, was Faddy, wasn't it? He yes, was a boot boy. Uh, he one. was. Um, lovely guy, still really close with him. Um, still speak to him at least once or twice a week. Uh, what a tremendous football player he was. Uh, but as a boot boy, he wasn't the best. And I, I remember the the Christmas, I gave him 30 quid uh, to say thanks for doing my boots, and he just wasn't having it. No. He actually went to give me it back. He's like, no, nah, I want more than that. And go to begin me more than that. So that's just, uh, I think that's a spring burn on him. Brilliant, yeah. <laughs> So back at Motherwell after your loan, um, how did it 
How did it come about with you? You going to play for the first team? Were you doing well in training? What was it? I think it was doing well in the reserves, uh, training with the first team, and I think it was Europa League. I think it was that I made my my debut. My par forty seven. I hit the post um, in the last couple of minutes, and that's when the, the the first time I'd ever been in the papers or anything like that, and um, that was quite a big thing for the family and myself, and. And then I just sort of, as Big Alec was putting me on the last 10, 20 minutes of games and uh, I managed to get a couple of goals and then just sort of kicked on for there. How was Big Alec for you as a manager? Brilliant, through? absolutely brilliant. Um, always sort of looked after me, but I think that was because my mum phoned him <laughs> <laughs> and gave him dogs abuse. <laughs> that he was, he was always, I was the one that would always put his arm around he, he took me off apprentice about a year and a quarter into my two year apprenticeship, made me pro. And I uh, had a meeting in front of all the boys and saying this is sort of the example that you've got to get to. So it made me feel uh, brilliant, made me feel like a football player and, and done loads for my career. And, uh, someday I'm, I'm still in touch with him again. Could you uh, tell even back then that he'd gone to be a, a top manager? Ah, he was good. He was good. He was into everybody, into everybody's skin. He was getting about the dressing room um, and he was a winner in his presence as well. Something that I noticed he's... The way he stood and looked at you, and he, I remember making my debut a couple of times under him, or coming on a couple of times under him. He was always there sitting next to me, telling me jokes and trying to get me to relax and stuff. So oh, it's all the man management stuff, isn't it? And um, I he was he was what wonders for my career. What about the older players at that time? How were they with you when you, you first broke through? I very good. I uh, I was Billy Davis, Paul Lambert, um, Jamie Dolan. All these players, that was the players that I cleaned about, it was Brian Martin. Um, it's just old school dressing room mentality you now. Sometimes at half time you're coming in, you've got two experienced players rolling about the ground fighting. Uh -huh. And that's the difference to, to Fipper now. It's, I come in and players will hardly speak to each other or, or say to each other that's negative. Um, whereas as a 17 year old you're coming in you've got two grown men rolling about the, the dressing room floor <laughs> fighting because they, when they pass the ball to each other I think that's um, missing a wee bit in the game no the fighting part but the the passion uh, but they were all great with me Billy Davis Paul Lambert as I said um, really took me under their wing and were they tough on you as well? Uh -huh. they weren't so much tough on me just a wee bit of banter now and again and um, helping me get better, talking to me about how I could get better and stuff like that. So, um, aye, that was that was great. Did you take to that environment straight away? Did you like that? I loved that, aye, because I grew up with that, to uh -huh. be honest with you, in the, in the, the streets. So, um, I could relate. Did you <laughs> could get probably well? relate, relate to that. I, no, I was never one of the ones rolling about the flare, but I was always uh, ready to jump in. <laughs> <laughs> so... <coughs> Eventually you become a first team regular, how did that feel, did, did you feel like you'd hit the big time? No, I felt as if I had so much to prove, um, I was a local boy playing there, uh, grew up Motherwell, so my first full season I'd been given the number nine jersey striker, Jim Griffin came to me and said you're going to be number nine, you need to believe in yourself for the rest of it, and uh, I started off the season really well, And but I always, I, I would never ever have said Oh, that's me made it, even to the week I retired. Never ever said, I think you've always got to have a point to prove every week. Um, and that's the mentality I've always had. Ask Fadi the same thing, when you're doing well for Motherwell, is it in the back of your mind to try and get a move to a bigger club? <sighs> I, I, th I think it's got to be, aye. Um, although I, I loved, I went, I went to the 91 Cup final. Uh, I went to loads of Motherwell games when I was a youngster. Um, because it was, I uh, stayed right next to the stadium. Um, but I think you've got to, you've got to try and better yourself and better your career. So there, there was a few um, clubs that were shown interest, but I was trying to know, uh, let it sidetrack me. I think uh, if I remember one time, Celtic were were interested, and nothing really came of that. Um, so uh, it was just, it was just kicking on, and then all of a sudden it was, it was Wigan that. that uh, come in for us and bid for us. And did you fancy Wigan straight away? Fancied Wigan straight away. Yeah. Uh, the agent phoned me and we, uh, Mr Whelan picked us up at uh, Cumbernauld Airport, my helicopter, took us down around the really? stadium. I did uh, a tour of the stadium 
fell up above and then dropped us off at his headquarters and it was 25,000 all-seater stadium in the old second division. So it was it was something that I had to jump at the chance to and uh, that, that started off another great journey in my career. So any second thoughts about going down and leaving Motherwell now? No, but they accepted the bid as well and I think they got about three quarters of a million pounds for us. So I think uh, coming through the ranks and, and so I, that's probably, they've benefit, benefited for that and, and probably I have as well. It was a bit of a strange start at the club for you. I think it was three managers in quick succession, was it? Three managers right away. I, the was that down to you? Or? Uh, probably <laughs> down to me, I think, the manager. <laughs> Wasn't that funny? <laughs> <laughs> the, the manager uh, get the sack. Was the, it Bruce Riot? Bruce Riot mm-hmm. get the sack uh, the night I signed. So I don't know what was going on there then. I think Colin Greeno took over as, as interim. And then it was Steve Bruce. Is yeah, that my, right? My twin. <laughs> <laughs> Steve Bruce took over for the for the remainder of the season. So it was it was and it was a hard start. That was me f- first time I'd moved away from uh, the parents' house. So it was uh, independent lifestyle. So it was something that took me a good while to get used to. It, to be honest, Did you go down there on your own, huh? I went down there on my own, um, and it was difficult in a hotel. Difficult finding my way through. Uh, just it, just it. <laughs> 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 Everything. Uh, it was just a, it was a new, new experience for me. So I did it. Took I took time to settle. Paul Douglas played there. Did he uh, help you settle in? He did. He was uh, still close to Paul uh, today. Uh, I think when I first moved in, as I say, it was all over the place. Paul is the closest thing you'll find to Jimmy Bullard at that time. Is he um, mad? Is he? Huh? No, he's he's crazy as well. Uh, and Paul came to stay with me uh, when I just bought my first house. Paul would come in, stay with me, and at, at Christmas, uh, invited me over. He's he, well, his dad phoned me to invite me over for Christmas dinner. Uh, so I had to sit with Paul, uh, his mum and dad, uh, Paul's sisters, and the spread was unbelievable. Yeah. It was it was just had everything on the table, biggest table, biggest dining room table I'd ever seen, and it was just full of food. And I just remember sitting, just looking at Kenny DeGleish for 15 minutes, just staring, looking, no talking, no saying a word. I was just, um, how do you say, a wee bit starstruck, mm-hmm. just sitting, staring at him. And Paul slapped me in me the back of the head to, to, for something to come out of my mouth, but mm-hmm. nothing would come out. I just, I think I mentioned to him, I'd read, I'd read about his book at the time. And I remember stuttering to him about something about his book. And he's just looking at me as if, what if I broke into my house here? <laughs> and since then, we, we'd spoke about that uh, about that time. I was, even his sisters were like looking at me as if, who is this guy? <laughs> any, chance, any chance of just speaking? <laughs> I couldn't, I was so shy and taken aback. But um, the family really looked after me. Um, and after that, we went down and Paul was always one for First, come on round to my, my dad's house, bring your tennis racket. Uh, we've got to get my tennis, cause you get, bring, your, <laughs> bring your towel and your trunks, he's got a pool, bring your gym stuff, because he's got a gym. <laughs> and then uh, we'll, after that, we'll go, down, we'll go down to his nightclub and stuff like that. That's so the sort of part of it he had. And um, he's got a speed camera in the driveway, all, the, all this sort of thing. <laughs> all these sort of things that, that Paul would hit out with. So, um, no, that was, that was a tremendous time and something that helped me settle in at Wigan. Was Kenny a top man, huh? Oh, he was brilliant. I uh, telling his, his stories and um, sharing his knowledge, and he would be on the phone now and again, uh, just to see how I was, how I was playing, how my how I was thinking, and just there with Kilmarnock, uh, we went to Lamanga and he came and watched us, uh, watched our training, watched us play a, a closed door friendly. Then after it, uh, he came over to me and says, "Right, we're coming, we're going back to Mabbit, we're going to have a couple of beers." So we sat on his sofa out his back. Uh, in La Manga and watching Sky Sports News, having a couple of beers with him. So it was these surreal moments that when somebody, his stature takes his time out to, to come and speak to you, give you his knowledge and um, his, what he was saying is any time um, you need any advice on playing, managing, any time, don't phone Paul, phone me. <laughs> <laughs> that, was his, that was his line, so it was, uh, that was great. Brilliant. You said the old second division, how did you find the... The standard, the difference between the league up here and down there? Uh, not much, to be honest. Yeah. Um, probably I'd be a bit more direct, but I think that suited me at the time. 
Um, but not much a difference. Some good players and some good teams down there, some big clubs. Um, but we managed to, I think it was the second season, we managed to win, win that division. Um, and then that was a sort of start on when, when Paul Jill came in. Was it a good set of boys doing it again? Aye, very good. Um, there was a there was a core there that when Paul Jill came in, he got ready um, right away, and I wasn't one of them, obviously. But <laughs> who were they? Uh, oh, there was about six or seven of them um, that, that Paul Jill sort of identified and get ready right away, get his new players in, and there was a different feel about the place right away for, for that time, and um, it was all sort of a success story after that. See, back in the days, was it? Play on a Saturday and then would everyone go out on a Saturday night? Everybody out on a Saturday night, aye. And if you won, it was all day Sunday as well. Um, <laughs> and sometimes the Tuesday, because uh, you'd be off on the Wednesday. <laughs> Wednesday so. yeah. But that's the, the team spirit was great. But I think people say nights out create team spirit. I think winning games create team spirit. Um, but if you're winning games and going out, then. Um, See, as a manager, would you be bothered if boys were going to? No, if you're winning games, no. no, no, definitely no. But if you're getting beat uh, and you're gonna, that's one thing we didn't do is when we get beat, we didn't, we didn't tend to go as much. It wasn't three nights, so it was just two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, obviously, the the main character in that team was the bulldog, Jimmy Bullard. How is he as mad as everyone thinks? Yes, I was. Yes, um, since then he's been in Celebrity Jungle and got himself um, about. Uh, Jimmy was Jimmy was my roommate for a for a long spell, um, and yes, just crazy, uh, the craziest guy. I've what sort of stuff met. did he do? Oh, I, uh, I can't really share much <laughs> with you. To be honest, we used to room together, and then uh, with the I think it was a Carling Cup final down in in Wales, and a room in Wales. So it was right, we need to get another night. We've got a big day tomorrow, and in the morning. I woke up at seven in the morning uh, and he's cuddled into the back of me and he's ki kissing, <laughs> kissing on my back and kissing on the back of my neck. I said, what are you doing? He's going, come on, big man. Nobody will know. Don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody. So he's going to my bed. He's like, all right, right, all right. No problem. So just wee things like that. I know that he was insinuating and it was just, just for banter. So I'd go and tell all the rest of the boys. So that's, that's the sort of a mark of the man he was. It was just all for a laugh. Was uh, every day the same? How was he like that every day? Every minute of every day, uh -huh. he was the same. Um, just non-stop and I think he doesn't get enough recognition for how good a player he was because of all the, the, the daftness. Stuff he does, uh -huh. Aye, um, great player, so fit um, and obviously scored goals, uh, free kicks, set plays, everything about him. And uh, the mental strength was ridiculous about how he'd believe, how he believed in himself and in the Playing Chelsea away, Man United away, he's, we're, we're uh, lining up next to your superstars. He world football, he's, he's just on and staring at them up and down as if, what, what you got for me? What you got for me today, big man? <laughs> Stuff like that. It's just, uh -huh. And it relaxed all us. It relaxed us as a team. So I think that's how we've done so well. And uh, Paul Jewell got his promoted? Paul Jewell took us for the second right to the Premiership um, and kept us up. So great influence in my career. Um, what was he good at? Getting angry. Was he? Being, uh, being very angry. Um, but he was also good at putting um, his arm around you and, and giving you the, the emotional or, or verbal cuddle, whatever you want to call it. But at times when I lost it, it was uh, certainly duck for cover. He mm. was angry scouser, is, is what he's known. But um, still somebody that phones me to this day and keeps in touch with me. So um, loads and loads of respect for him. See, when you first went down there in the old second division, did you ever think you would get up to the Premier League? Not at that time, no. I think it's just climbing um, the leagues at, at a time. And you get into the Championship, and that's unforgiven, that league. And uh, we got promoted in the last day. Sunderland won it that year. We we to win uh, in the last day of the season against Reading. I think we beat them 3-1. I managed to get the first goal for that. Uh, in that game and that, uh, what, a, what an occasion that was, going up to the Premiership and coming out a, a very difficult championship. And how was the Premier League? Is it is it tough? Uh, obviously very tough, but at the time I didn't think it was as bad as what people were, or as good as what mm -hmm. people were making it. I think the, the, especially the bigger teams let you play 
Um, and then when you get into uh, the final third, that's where they, they basically just take it off you and counter attack. And um, when they've got the ball, you're sitting away in it. Wasn't as the pace, pace and power. I think it's uh, the biggest thing that I learned for, for my time in the Premiership, who which was, I uh, didn't have. <laughs> <laughs> who, was, uh, who was the best that he's played in there? Played, uh, played against? Uh -huh. That Carling Cup final, Rene and Ronaldo played. And there was a time in that final, Ronaldo's took a touch in one byline and he's kept it up to nearly the other byline, kept keeping the ball. That was phenomenal, his, his physique, his pace, his tricks, confidence, freedom. Everything they had, they just had a lot, and that's when Rooney was just um, breaking on the scene as well. So, probably uh, they two players. So obviously you done great at Wigan. Um, how did the the Rangers move come about? Um, over a Christmas period, I think Rangers put a bid in for me, and uh, Wigan knocked it back. I ended up putting a transfer request in. Uh, Paul Jewell fell out with me. Um, it was all. Up in the air, so I had to play for the, the rest of the season at Wigan, uh, and I was my head was all over the place. I, I, I didn't have one good game in all that time. Um, and then in the summer, the bid got accepted and made my way up to uh, Rangers. So it was it was about six months uh, emotions going through my head of, well, yeah. is it going to happen, is it not going to happen? But uh, the day I, I signed, I'll never ever forget that day. Obviously, you grew up as a a Rangers supporter. Uh, when you heard of that bid, were you just desperate to get the move done? Uh -huh. Desperate to get the move uh -huh. done. I was transfer requests, try to follow with managers, and uh, I remember saying to Paul Jewell had left in the summer, so it was Chris Hutchins that took it. So I was trying to disrupt training. I was trying to say to him, just just let me go, and he's saying, you know, I can't. The, the the border want more money for you, and I said, oh, I'm not I'm not playing for you then. I'm not playing for you, and it was, it was something that I actually regret now. Because mm -hmm. um, Wigan had been so so good to me, and it, I wasn't really doing it against the club. It was all to to go of my my boyhood dream move, um, and eventually it went through. And I, I thanked everybody at Wigan and Chris Hutchins and and the board at the time. So I've still got a, a great affinity with Wigan. And as you say, you'll never forget the day you signed with Rangers. Um, how did uh, your family in that feel with, with the delight that you, you went to your club? Uh, my, my dad especially. My dad's been uh, the biggest influence in, in me, being a Rangers fan and, and making my way probably through football. He was... Uh, I brought a tear to his eye and that, that, was, that was something to see, so I've, I've brought him back. We Jimmy Bell gave me a, a Rangers top right after I'd signed and come back uh, with, with Dad. Uh, own it, and he's, uh, he still wears that to this day. <laughs> um, the club excelled in Europe your first season, you scored in a 3 0 victory away at Leon. Was that kind of the turning point for you at Rangers? Um, aye, probably, because uh, I felt it was quite a lot of money Rangers paid for me. I think it was 2.25 million, which for I think it was 28 at the time. That's, that's a lot of money. Uh -huh. um, but I suppose if you're coming for the Premiership, then that's what Wigan's point was, that's what I'd be valued at. Um, but I thought it was too much money and that was playing sort of mind games with me. And if the fans' perception is we've paid all this money, um, we probably expect more. So um, getting, that, getting that goal uh, on that stage and getting that result and the performance that night was, um, was brilliant. So that started to build a, a bit of confidence. You see, obviously, is it, because it is your boyhood club, is it hard to go there? Is it hard to go? Oh, you're like, you're delighted with the move, but then once you get there, it's... Aye, the pressure hits, the expectation levels hit. Um, and being a supporter, and me knowing me, I put more pressure on myself than, than anybody else. So, at times, it gets hard. Um, you get a bit of stick, your family gets a bit of stick. Um, nephews get a bit of stick at their school, mm -hmm. all, all that stuff. But this is all this stuff you've got to... You've got to cope with and, and uh, be determined and single-minded to get to know you're going to come through at the other end of it, and, and that's what I did do. Is that the hard part of being a Rangers player? Not just the football, it's going for Wigan where you're left alone a bit, but to Rangers you're under the microscope every Aye, second. definitely. Going out in uh, Glasgow during the day, shopping, whatever. Uh, you're with your kids, you're getting heckled for, for anybody and everybody. Um, so that was uh, pretty... Uh, at times it's tough to take for the kids, but it's part and parcel. 
And then obviously say the highs are so high when you score that goal against Leon. You forget all that and Oh of course you do the old firm games, uh the old firm games that you win, you're that's you, you're you're delighted and the ones you lose, you're under your bed for a couple of days to, <laughs> to hide and get away from everything. Ball of and, vodka. <laughs> 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 uh, radio off, T V off, you don't want to listen to to anything and, and hope that it's going to die down. But that's, uh, that's the pressures that come with playing with a, a massive club. Said about the Leon goal, how, how did you find it playing in the Champions League? Loved it, loved the music, uh, loved the stadiums, the, the atmospheres. I, Ibrox was, the home games, Ibrox was bouncing. What, what, what a tremendous atmosphere it was. Um, and, and playing in some of the big games like Leon, Barcelona, home and away, just uh, games like that, it's just uh, unreal. Did you always feel like you had a chance in those games? At home particularly? Uh, um, Barcelona, a chance to kick the ball. <laughs> <laughs> would, have, would have been no bad. Um, <laughs> and that ended up nil-nil um, in that game. But the games, I think you always, you get into every game, think you've got a chance. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's how it starts and how it pans out, is how your uh, mentality shifts and come about. So. I think you get into every game thinking that, that something could happen here positive. How good was uh, Walter Smith in, in those games at preparing you and making you believe that you had a chance of winning? Great, I think he was all mind games. He wasn't a, a massive on tactics. He wasn't, I wouldn't say he was a massive tactician. We didn't do, in a modern day football player, no, was, oh, let's do shape, we need to do shape, we're not doing enough shape. We, we, didn't, we didn't do any shape. We, if anything, we would do shape before an old firm game or a Champions League game and it would be literally no more than five minutes. Yeah. But all the league games, never done any shape. It was just go and play, go and win the game, you know, the expectations. And um, I think that's how football's changed a, a little bit as well because you've got your modern day footballers watching Monday Night Football, Gary Neville. With uh, the pen and all Yes, uh -huh. uh, analysing all the games and where people should run. and and young football players and modern day football players are saying, well, your manager, manager should be doing that with us instead of just going out and playing with our freedom. Uh -huh. um, well, I saw the Rangers boys this, ever on the receiving end of Big Waters here, Brian? No, but I've been sitting next to Kevin Thompson, who was, uh, when we get put out, uh, the Champions League qualifying Kevin, stage, he's away to Kaunas. Kaunas, uh -huh. That was, that was, my head was nearly between my knees in case I got eye contact with him and he, he started in me, he, he went through Tomo that day, really went through him, picked up a, a teapot and turned around and threw it off the wall and it missed Jimmy Bell with about an inch. And I was petrified, uh -huh. absolutely petrified. And, uh, when Did he, he have that fear factor then? Ah, uh, uh, all uh -huh. day. Um, even in training, you just knew if you get a stare, or if you'd got training, the, his backroom staff would go take the warm up and stuff. Everybody would be joking about it. And then as soon as he came out, everyone's like, oh no, the manager's here, we need to get our heads down. And, and that was the presence he had. And when he walked into a dressing room, everybody just shut up and looked at him right yeah. away. So there was a bit of a, a fear factor there, but he, he only unloaded maybe once or twice, really. Right. But I was never, thankfully, in the, in the end of one of them. Yeah, you reached the FA Cup final at the end of that season. Uh, talk us through the run in the game itself. The run the, the Champions League and then uh, Sporting Lisbon away. I, 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 I was injured for a couple of the Europa games. And then Fiorentina was over there, we natural with a penalty. And then the, the build up to the Cup final was uh, was brilliant. And I thought they'd make a day out with the family. So. Uh, ordered a, a big limo thing to take my dad and brothers and all the family down. They were going down like royalty, uh, and apparently the the M6 was uh, was chock a block with all Rangers fans and Manchester. Obviously, just the atmosphere is ridiculous, yeah. ridiculous. Even coming back, turning back training the night before, just getting past all the fans, and that is an experience that, that I'll never forget. And just. Um, we probably didn't deserve it on the day, uh, but the experience we took it was was phenomenal. Uh, Barry Ferguson felt like the team never done itself justice in that final. Would you agree with that? Aye, I, I would. Um, I don't know what it was, but when you look at the the team we did, the squad we had, um, I think we just underperformed on the night. Uh, but when you look at the players they had uh, as well, um, they had they had a tremendous squad. Uh, so, 
probably squad wise they had the better squad, but we the we at that time had momentum and team spirit and just a wee bit disappointed within the day, a wee bit better.